Hello guys and welcome to this second video in the game engine survey. Hope you guys are doing good. The first thing I want to say is thank you for all your feedbacks in the previous video because that was quite encouraging. So I just wanted to say that. In the first video we spoke about um, some important things that we needed to have in place before starting writing any line of code. And um, yeah, we even created our core engine class which is like the central point of our game engine. So if you're watching this video for the first time, I think it really makes sense for you to go and check that video first because we also spoke about um, how to set up the libraries like glue, glfw, glm and all that kind of stuff and we also spoke about the fact that you need to have some basics knowledge about OpenGL before getting into this and uh, I do have a basics OpenGL series which I also provide a link in the description below so if you don't know anything about OpenGL check that first because that's going to provide you some theoretical aspect of OpenGL that you need in this game engine since we're not going to be explaining everything about OpenGL. That's quite important to see. Now in today's video we're going to be adding some more stuff into our game engine to kind of extend um, what it can do but we're not drawing anything on the screen yet. We're just adding some you know, few things that I think will be important later. If you remember from the from the previous video it wasn't possible to close the windows because we didn't have any event. So now we're going to be creating an event system which is going to be uh, registering our callbacks so that we can maybe close the window and things like that. And we're also going to be adding like a timer system which is going to calculate the delta time. So that's basically what we're going to be doing in this video. Yeah, before we get started, just want to invite you guys to subscribe, like this video and share. And the last thing I want to say is you can always get the source code on my Patreon page if you are interested in that. The link is also in the description. So let's get started. If you have been following along then what you have right now is just this engine folder and the app and pca.h and .cpp files. I just want to invite you now to go and create uh, three new folders, core, event and timer. We're going to be getting into that in just a moment. Now the first thing I want to speak about is in my pch.h, in my precompiled header file because I added glfw there. Some of you might not agree with me doing this because, uh, yeah, you will say you're not going to be using this uh, GLFW quite a lot. So why are you putting this in here? Now the reason is, first of all, GLFW is not a huge library. It's like 500 uh, kilobyte. It's quite lightweight, so it makes a lot of sense to me to put it here. And the second reason is, I know I'm going to be using this a lot. Just in this video, in the engine, event, and timer folders, I'm going to be using this library. So that's why I thought it was better for me to kind of put it in the pch.h here. You guys can still leave it outside if you want, but for me, I'm going to be putting this here. This will make my job quite easy because later we're going to be creating our entity component system. And uh, um, with that, we're going to be building like a keyboard control system. And we're going to be having to include this in that in the component and things like that so i think this really makes a lot of sense for me to put it here so that was the first thing i wanted to say you want to make this and you know just compile a project so that the pre-compile header will also get built the next thing i want to speak about is the timer so in your timer you want to create a new class with a header and a c plus plus file this class is also going to be a static class or a singleton class and one thing I forgot to mention in the previous video in our engine class because I forgot to you know uh, delete this equal operator so if you've been watching in the previous video I didn't have this this line of code here my class well well was yet a singleton class but it has a problem that someone could use this equal to copy the value somehow and I didn't want that to happen that's why I need to delete this equal operator so that's why if I come down here and remove this reference right here then this is going to be uh, an error you see this shouldn't have because I can copy this using the equal operator but since I'm using the reference right here you know that's why I'm able to actually get from this guy here 
the value so this is the only way I can actually get a reference for this class so I can never copy it I can only get the reference so that's quite important and that's the same thing we're doing here for this timer class so I just create my namespace and uh, I just call it T timer because I want to use the name timer down here for the for my variable that I'm going to be using everywhere I include this header file so if I put timer here then I couldn't use it here that's why I just put this T underscore timer and it's quite the same principle I have my destructor and uh, I delete the copy constructor and the equal operator and I create my uh, get function this function which returns the reference for my uh, instance and I have this uh, function co uh, called ticks which, which is going to be calculating the delta time and things like that and I have initialize and this function returns the delta time and my constructor is, is like private and also one thing which is important are the member variable I have the last frame and the delta time to calculate the delta time we need to have the last frame and the current frame so to say the current time the last time and the current time how long the computer took to make a loop basically and so we can use that to calculate our time and if I go to my C++ file here you will see I have my constructor which has nothing yet I'm just initializing these guys here and uh, yeah this also has nothing maybe later if you want to create like a counter or things like that that's thing that you can initialize in here so I just define those functions just to have them uh, around if in case I want to use that and here you can see I use GLFW to actually get the time the current time which I removed the last time from and that's basically my delta time and I always want to make sure I set the last time to be the current and so I always have like a consistent delta time we're gonna be seeing how to use this later the next thing I want to show you is the event class it's the same thing it's gonna be a singleton class you want to also define this you know uh, a copy uh, constructor as being deleted and the equal operator you want to delete it the constructor should be private and you want to also create the static variable which you're going to be using around to play with this function as we add things like keyboard and you know mouse control this is going to be quite important that's why we have this around and we only have two functions here right now we have the pool and the initialize which are quite straightforward the pool we simply call glf pool event you know it's just gonna be you know sending the event in the routine so that uh, they get handled and the initialize what we basically do here is we get the window from the core from the engine we get the window to initialize because in glfw you can register some callback function for a different event so if you want to have a mouse event you want to implement a function for the mouse event and you want to register that in glfw so that he he will use that when a mouse event occurs in this case for example i have the uh, windows close callback and here i have the set windows close callback from glfw and i simply pass my function as parameter to that and i'm passing also a pointer to the window on which we're actually handling the close that's why i get the window from my core class which i included up here so and the quit simply call the you know core and then quit you remember the quit function of our core class which basically sets the value of run to false and I also say glf window should close and set it to true and set the condition for my uh, main loop or game loop or whatever to false so that we can break that so that's basically what the event class does so if I switch over to my app.cpp you will see all of these in place but before that I want to speak about this core folder right here in the core folder I created a simple file called fod 3d whatever in which I include all these things I think these things are quite important because we're gonna be using this a lot as we create systems for rendering or you know system for rigid bodies you know things like that we're gonna be using the delta time we're gonna be using key control we're gonna be using the size of the window to re recalculate the perspective and you know things like that so that's why I wanted to create like this file here where I'm gonna be adding all the core component of our game engine so everywhere I include this, I will be able to access the timer, the event, and the core object which I created. And then I will be able to actually use that to do whatever I want. So and in my main file here, you can see I simply include the core, you know, whatever. And I can initialize the core, initialize the timer, initialize the event system, and simply run my main loop. And here I calculate the delta time 
I pull my event and I want to update the call because we're going to be calling as we create our entity component system we're going to be calling the manager the manager in here to update everything and all our entities will be handled in there and that's basically what we had to do in this video so I hope you guys learned something from this video if you did make sure you leave a comment in the description below and if you haven't subscribed please make sure you subscribe because it really helps a lot so thank you for watching hope you guys are gonna stay healthy and see you in the next video ciao